Throughout this series, we have gone over the different aspects of the idealist metaphysics. We define consciousness, clarify the different views of idealism, and explain the nature of the external world, the nature of perception, and the relationship between mind and brain. In this video, I hope that I will be able to put us all together into a coherent, idealist picture of the world. As discussed in previous videos, idealism is a metaphysical view about the nature of reality. Idealism posits that the fundamental nature of reality is consciousness. Consciousness is simply just mental activity in and of itself. You are conscious and you experience things even if you don't have full self-reflexive knowledge of those experiences. Your experiences of the world include things such as sounds, taste, colors, sensations, smells, etc. The world is exactly as it appears to be in the sense that you experience the world as physicality. Now, physicality in this context does not refer to the physical in the same way that physicalists would talk about the physical. When we are talking about the physical, we are only referencing what we can directly experience. This means that something that is physical is something that is experienced by a subject as being hard, soft, or having some structure to it that we can reference by appealing to our experience of it. This means that idealism is the simplest view that one can hold as it relates to the nature of the physical world. The physical world is nothing but the sensational qualities, and so there is no need to reduce it down any further. Our experiences of the world simply just is the world because the world itself is experience. The colors, sounds, and smells you are experiencing right now are the real reality, the actual world. The implication is that all of reality is in consciousness, for reality would be made of the qualities of subjective experience. But if that is so, it is your body that is in consciousness, not consciousness and your body. And, as we went over in a previous video, the mental experience of color creates a third-person perspective of the first person taking place. Because, if all of reality is simply just made of the qualities of subjective experience, then it would be the subjective experience that would create a third-person perspective of such subjective experiences. The subjective experience would be the first-person experience taking place. But there is a representation of that first person experience that we see, which is the external world. There is a world out there beyond all human subjective experience. That would be the transpersonal experience of universal consciousness. And it is mental activity which is outside our volitional control. Not all conscious processes fall in the field of volition, as we all know, our nightmares, spontaneous visions, hallucinations, etc. are all undeniably real experiences we can have, but they are not under the control of our volition. They are totally autonomous experiences, and so the objective world out there would be fully autonomous and outside our control. Because of this, if we see the world as simply just experience, then it would be one unified whole. This means that the mind and the brain would be made of the same ontological substance. The brain would simply just be the representation of someone's mind. Since we live in a public environment, which is a shared world in which different minds can interact, then there would be a representation of the mental activity taking place. The representation of all mental activity would simply just be what matter is. Matter is just the representation of mental activity, and our brain is the representation of our private mental activity. If this is true, then matter affecting the brain would affect and mold the mind since whatever affects the brain would be made of the same substance. Just like a thought can disrupt an emotion, and vice versa, one can have transpersonal mental activity which is the representation of any physical object, and it would have an effect on someone's private mental activity. Of course, this would all be true on a monistic picture of idealism. 
There are various versions of idealism, and some of them would be more subjective in their approach. And others would be more pluralistic, where reality is nothing but a society of eternal minds living among each other. But the bottom line is that, in idealism, the world is just experience. There is nothing else to appeal to, because reality is just consciousness and its qualities. The thing we call matter is simply just the qualities of experience. The physical world is the representation of mental activity because that is all that exists. Idealists do not need to appeal to a world that is devoid of the sensational qualities of experience. We can explain everything in terms of experience and it is the simplest possible ontology while retaining the explanatory power to account for the facts of the world. I hope that my viewers have enjoyed this series. And so this concludes the Idealism Explained series.